What's up, preppers? Got another question that I think needs a video to answer it. Um, these are the questions that I put in the competition video, which is still ongoing. You've still got chances to enter for that prize draw. A couple of videos back, go and have a look for it. it says big 2,000 subs on the thumbnail. Um, this question came in from Finley Whiston 4955 Do you think the government would confiscate people's supplies in an SHTF situation? Interesting question. I know the US channels have been talking about FEMA would come and take um, their supplies in a national emergency. Quite a few of the US preppers have been putting videos out about this recently. Now, we don't have FEMA over here. So, but does that mean we get away with it? Well, let's see what they're actually looking for. So they're centered around eight things as far as I can see at the moment. These are in no particular priority order, but it's radios and emergency comms, generators, so alternative power supplies, weapons like firearms, etc., medical supplies, that includes equipment and medication, food, just all food, seeds, water, and civil liberties. And by civil liberties, we mean things like the right to your own property ownership, things like that. So that's what they say they're coming after. They, they're, they're talking about that they've got the powers now to do this, and in a national emergency, they would do. So it's got kind of the prepper community over there a bit on edge thinking, you know, it might not just be roving gangs of people that they're worried about. It could be their own government. Now, the question being, in the UK, would we be subjected to this? Well, we don't have FEMA, and I think by the time they were raiding homes, it would already be beyond SHTF. We don't have FEMA, but we do have emergency response and recovery section of the government who can bring in emergency laws and legislation as long as it's an appropriate level of response to the situation. That's what they say. Now, you can read a bit more about this on the Civil Contingencies Act 2004 or by searching the government site for guidance on emergency response and recovery. They don't say they're going to come and get your stuff. They don't say they won't come and get your stuff. They don't say any of that, but they do state, like I say, they can put in legislation and laws without hardly any notice at all. So they could do it. They could. They could literally, they could come and take all our stuff. They could strip us of everything. We'd be upset about it. There might be a few scraps on their hands, but they could do it. But will it happen? That's the question. See, I don't think they'll come door to door, at least not for a long time. There's many, many steps, and different parts of call in that process first. The first one of them being retailers and wholesalers. They would take control of their supply chains. So that's not just saying cut it off, but that we'd be limited on what we can buy. They'd take X amount percentage to for population, for military, whatever they needed to do, but they would take control of them supply chains. Um, and once they were all but gone or under control of the state, we'd be on a ration based system. So that's if we had any access to the food at all. Um, and we'd certainly be encouraged to grow your own food. It would be a similar sort of dig for victory in World War II campaign. So it would all be about self-sufficiency and trying to teach the base levels of self-sufficiency for people so they can survive on a ration with their own produce on top of it. Could we do it? I don't know. I don't know. There's going to be lots of people who expect everything like that, the one-click buy generation that are not going to not going to put up with that at all the next stage would be the shame and guilt campaign now this would be targeted to us as preppers they'd be saying things like look at these dirty hoarders keeping all that food for themselves while we starve if you see it report it blah 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 now this was what this would be the situation where they could then pass some sort of legislation or law to say if you've got over a certain amount of food you have to declare it or you're simply not allowed to store food. You're not allowed to stockpile food. So, and then that would rely on a system of people just coming forward and handing their stuff in, 
or people getting grassed on, as it were, you know, people getting reported. And that's the point where you would see government forces being police, being private, being military, whatever it is, that's when you'd see them coming to the door of a house that's been reported, or oh, they've got loads of food in there, blah, blah, blah. So, yes, it could happen, is the answer. I'm not trying to fear, put fear into you there. I do think it, that's a very long process. We'd go through all the rationing bits first. It wouldn't be just overnight, or oh, no, my preps are under threat. You'd have probably used a lot of them by the time they got to that stage. But this is where OPSEC becomes vastly important, not just at the time, but on the lead up to the time. Yeah, if your neighbour sees you going into the house with 300 cans and SHTF happens a week later, he's going to remember you've got 300 cans, yeah? You know, and that's not to say he's going to come round for it, but he could then ring the authorities when these campaigns happened. Oh, that's him. He, he's hardening all that food and we're starving. We should report him, you know? People get very bitter in situations like that. So consider how you're storing your preps. If you've got all your food for every day, for preps or everything, all in your garage in one set of shelves, and they come in and see that, it's all gone, done. So consider different caches of food around the house in secret locations, outside of the house, buried even, further away from the house in bug out locations or places you could get to which to retrieve that so think about them contingencies think about everything you can see the immediate if you open your kitchen cupboards has gone what's your next step also keep it in mind when it comes to barter we always talk about a barter system after shtf or tiotawaki now that you couldn't start that BART system straight away if we were in a ration situation, yeah? I look at the spivs of World War II, the black market. People got reported all the time. People resented people like that as well, okay? If you start trading chocolate and vodka to all your neighbours, sooner or later somebody's going to report that, guarantee you. And there you go. There's all your stash gone again. You have to carry on and act like others. So... If you're on, if they're on rations and you can get like six eggs a week, you've got to queue up and give me a ticket and you get your six eggs, go and do it. Even if you don't need them, even if you've got six metric tons of powdered egg. And if you feel guilty doing that, then give them six eggs away, not all to one person. It would, don't make it obvious. Give an extra egg to a family that look like they need it and say, oh, I don't need it. I've, 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 this is enough for me. And just do that in ones and twos. So you can help at the same time. Do it to trusted people as well. That's the thing. Don't just give it to random people you don't know. Um, when all said and done, unless you're willing to fight off government forces or become completely shut down, grey man, look like an abandoned building, then you're going to have to seem like you're being compliant. And carefully how I word that. So compliance must be what, is perceived by other people you're doing everything everyone else is doing yeah don't do anything different okay if everyone's starving around you don't be cooking up a full english and gaining a stone in the first week because you're eating prep after prep okay so just bear that in mind um i honestly don't think it would come to this genuinely because i don't think we've got the fortitude for this rationing and stuff like that. And I think it would be chaos way before it got to that point. Genuinely, I think the rule of law would be out the window and that's a whole different ball game when you're having to defend your food against other people. So play out the what ifs in your own head. Think about your own plans. If all that's gone, what's the next step? If people come and take my stuff away, what have I got in reserve? So make sure you're planning all the time, planning all them potential loss of supplies. Um, all of this is, of course, theoretical. Take it all with a pinch of salt. I still stand by, I genuinely don't think the government's going to come knocking on preppers' doors, taking their supplies. Whatever you've stockpiled, whether it's three months, six months, a year, two years supply, 
they've got more than you. The warehouses they'll confiscate have more than you. You will run out of food before they do. So I think I don't think you've got any fear there. Apart from running out of food, of course. <laughs> but that's it. Just a little video to answer that question. Really do appreciate that, uh, Finley, for your question and your input. And if you made it this far, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts below. I read all the comments for every single video. It's really appreciated. Consider becoming a member. Names of the members are going across the bottom there. Um, their little donations do really help me keep going and create new content all the time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.